Welcome to A Culture of the Supernatural. Hi, this is Apostle Jonathan Bird. Using my experience as a springboard, I want to share with you steps that you can take to begin the process of walking in the supernatural. Amazing progress can be made by both men and women who are willing to be disciples. True freedom is a result of understanding and receiving the truth about yourself and your creator. Come and join with me in today's message. If you think you're too small to be effective for the kingdom of God, you obviously never been in bed with a mosquito. Hello, this is Apostle Bird, and this is our podcast number five, Prisoners of Hope, Hopelessness, or Champions of Faith. Hopelessness is a patron of thinking, where an individual believes they are trapped in misery with no expectation of things ever getting better. Hopelessness means Beyond optimism or hope, despairing, impossible to accomplish, solve or resolve problems, not able to learn, perform, or work as desired. Inadequate, hopelessness is desperation. People who feel insignificant remain ineffective and small. They become like grasshoppers in their own sight and may never inherit all that Jesus died to give them. Remember the children of Israel? Remember 12 of them went out, but 10 of them came back with a bad report. They said that we were like grasshoppers in their eyes. This occurs when people feel like they're backed up into a corner and they have no way out. But I've got good news for you today. I've got kingdom news for you. And that is, hopelessness is reversible. Suffering is temporary to those who trust in the Lord. You know, pain is not your enemy. It is just the evidence that you had one. The grace of God is renewable every single day. Life in the Spirit is rejuvenated on a daily basis as you renew your mind with the Word of the living God. While the outward man, Paul said, is perishing, perishing, the inward man is being refreshed by the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. In Revelation 21, verse 3 and 4, these words, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle or the habitation of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be their God, and he will wipe every tear, every single tear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, and there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you. Listen, this temptation of COVID-19, this pandemic, it will not overtake you. Listen to this. No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to man. But God is faithful. Get that in your heart, child of God. God is faithful, who would not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Solomon penned these words, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Our trust is not in angels or people or rituals or mythology, but in the Lord alone and not in our own understanding. To trust in the Lord with all of our heart is to rely upon all of his promises. The devil is not after your money. He's not after your home. He's not after your clothes. He's not after your children or anything else you think he's after. He's after only one thing, your kingdom faith. He knows that if he can steal your faith, you will be spiritually bankrupt. Faith gives us hope. So if faith is lost, hope is lost. Lost kingdom faith leads to lost hope, which leads to despair. Kingdom faith is necessary in the kingdom if 
in the kingdom because God, because without it, kingdom principles cannot be activated in your life. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, these words, all of the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Why is that? Because the kingdom of God is within you. One of my favorite scriptures I'm about to read to you just blesses me, and I know it will bless you. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, these words, For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Come on, he's a bad God. In Isaiah 41, verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The verse says in the book of Proverbs, it says, lean not. The word lean not means to slant, incline, bend, or tilt, as to move in a slanted position, or in other words, to form an iniquity. Iniquity is something that is worthless, something that is twisted, like pride, like the spirit of Leviathan. Strongholds is what people rely upon to defend the protected right to believe what they want to, contrary to the truth of God's word. Some of the common strongholds of depression or oppression you will identify in people. You may even identify them in yourself. Suspicion, fear, doubt, self-indulgence, independence, false security, confusion, unforgiveness, double-mindedness, distrust, control, manipulation, self-indulgence again, rejection, self-rejection, denial, chronic illnesses in your body over and over. This is a list of strongholds that people erect around things they cannot bear to face, causing them to slip into oppression, fear, and doubt. This is what helpless people live through every single day. An individual mental stronghold is a way of thinking and feeling that has developed a life of its own within you. We create in the, we were created in the image of God with a free will. Whatever we create within us has a life of its very own. The prophet Isaiah calls it a spirit of heaviness. Depression affects, I am told, 17.3 million American adults. 7.1% of those, those ages range from 18 and above, a year and 1.9, a year and 1.9 million children ages from 3 to 17 suffer from depression. It's normal for people to, to struggle with a spirit of heaviness and to experience waves of sadness. One of the outstanding marks of Christianity, this was said by Derek Prince. One of, the, one of the outstanding marks of Christianity in the first century was that they cared for the weak and the broken. They cared for the sick. They didn't just write them off. This is what really impressed, this is what really was so impressive about the ancient world. The world could not understand what made these Christians so concerned about people who had nothing to offer, nothing to offer. They were just simply the world's liability. But I have come to see, he said, that if we write off human liability, that is not strength, it is only weakness. The people who are liabilities, the incapacitated, the infirm, the weak believers, are the test of our kingdom faith and spiritual strength. We have obviously come to a place in the United States and in other countries where we cannot permit ourselves to live by the established standards of this age. 
Galatians 6 and 2 says these words, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We have come to a place in our time where God's Word teaches us His ways, and it teaches us His thoughts. And I'm so excited about that, that we don't have to give in and won't pass people and leave. Born-again believers, kingdom believers, hopeless, without hope, despair, in depression, and oppression. And so I bring this message to you today because I want you to know that you are champions of faith. And you don't have to remain fragmented. You don't have to allow yourself to occur or to be offended or to be hurt or to be wounded or to be rejected or bitter or be under the circumstances that has entered into this season to stop you, delay you, and to hinder you. And I have good news for you, child of God. I am telling you that there is an inward man inside of you. There's a kingdom man inside of you. There's a kingdom woman inside of you. There's a kingdom child inside. And it wants to rise up and it wants to rise above the circumstances and stand firm on the word of God and exercise the authority of God by the word to pull down every stronghold and uproot every strong man and spoil his goods. I want you to be encouraged as I leave this message with you that God loves you. I love you. Me and my wife, Deborah, are praying for you. We know that you will come out of this stronger than you've ever been. And I want you to know that the power of the Most High God has overshadowed you. And the Spirit of the Living God is inside of you. He will deliver you. He will bring you out. Not only will He bring you out, but He will bring you out full. You will not come out with lack, nor smelling like smoke. I want you to know that I love you. This is Apostle Bird, and I want you to be strong in the Lord and His power for might. And I want you to put on the whole armor of God this day. I want you to walk in His power. I want you to be in harmony with the Holy Spirit, and I want you to be whole, and I want you to walk in the strength that this word has delivered to you to this day. This is Apostle Bird. Peace out. I love you. This is Apostle Bird. So glad that you tuned into the podcast. I'm looking forward to you enjoying it again. Come with us soon and meet us with our next Supernatural Podcast. God bless you.